Hey, it's Corbett Harrison, and here is another example of how you might model the tool Screencast-O-Matic to enable your students to create videoed presentations. I'm going to show you another example that I would encourage my students to do in my classroom, um, and I hope that watching this might inspire you to think of one of your own routines where uh, a Screencast-O-Matic example might just inspire students to try this tool and so here we go um, Max's words um, is a book that I uh, display in my classroom it encourages the idea of collecting vocabulary um, which is a big theme in my classroom every word every week we are to add four four new words that we discover in what we're reading or what we've heard that we say that's a good word I should add that to my vocabulary and uh, that's our vocabulary workshop is what we call it every week they come in with four published words published means they've put them in a small piece of writing um, and uh, they share those pieces of writing with one another um, and then every other week is actually our vocabulary workshop day where we set aside 30 minutes um, and my students at that point have eight vocabulary words and through a variety of partnerships they go around and they teach at least five six or seven other students their favorite words from the week and their goal is to try to encourage the student to like their word enough to want to uh, make it one of their own vocabulary words as well my students usually do these on paper um, the paper gets fancy Sometimes it becomes poster boards instead of just the online handout I give the students to use. Um, sometimes they uh, build crazy things to display their words on. But uh, I would think that if they're willing to do that, they're willing to make perhaps a videoed version. And so here is what one could like and could look like in my classroom. Um, and uh, this week um, I am reading um, Gerald Durrell's uh, My Family and Other Animals, which is an autobiography with a zoological account of all the flora and fauna of Greece. Um, and I'm enjoying the book very much, but I've been finding good words in the book. Um, the word I found first is sepulchral. Um, sepulchral is the adjective that comes from the noun sepulcher. Sepulchral and sepulchral, um, slightly different uh pronunciation. Um, a sepulcher is what's carved into stone or made out of stone where you place a body when you are entombing it or putting it in a mausoleum. Um, and uh, if a place has the feel of one of those mausoleums where it's gloomy and dismal and not very happy place, you could describe it as being sepulchral. For my activity for this particular uh, uh, vocab word, my writing activity, I did the synonym, the, the illustrated synonym and antonym list. And here are the rules. All of the words have to match part of speech. And so if the vocabulary word is an adjective, all the other words have to be adjectives too. And the students have to check that. Um, and then all of them have to be what I would consider to be high quality words. Um, I told, tell the students they need at least three of each, but always get a fourth just to be safe in case I don't think one of their word choices is high quality. And then there always has to be a visual that represents each half or one visual that represents both halves. And here you see I found this piece of clip art of going from, uh, I reversed it, but it goes from the funeral on one side, um, which is the sepulchral side to the antonym, um, the birth of a baby, which would be an ebullient or a jaunty um, kind of uh, experience in your life. And so uh, that's my um, vocabulary activity. And that's what my students do is they present their activities to each other. Here's another one because they do eight when they sit down. Um, I also found the word lugubrious, which is just a great sounding word, um, which means something that sounds sad or dismal, which reminded me a lot of sepulchral, which, uh, um, but the first half of the book is based on things that are kind of miserable, mostly the weather. That's why the family relocates themselves. And so there's lots of sad and depressing words, lugubrious being one of them. I decided to take the word lugubrious and turn it into a fake iPhone app. And uh, um, in this case, um, what I have to do is name my app Lugubrious, and then I have to write a little description of what it does. And a lugubri Lugubrious as a, uh, an app, I was thinking of a situation like a funeral, where sometimes people try to make it lighthearted. And some people don't want it to be lighthearted. Um, and sometimes you're at a movie where someone's being inappropriate when it's a sad movie, laughing at the overacting or whatever it might be. And I thought, if you had an app that just 
made sounds of someone crying so sadly you would feel really guilty if you laughed. Um, I decided that would be what lugubrious the uh, phone app would do. And uh, at the end of my discussion and sharing that with my partner, I would say, so what would your phone app based on lugubrious do? And once that discussion is over, my students would move on to word three partners. Hey, sturdorously. It's another hard one for me to say, sturdorously. Um, sturdorous breathing is what doctors say when breathing sounds really labored or it's like snoring breathing, um, really loud breathing. If you breathe sturdorously, um, you are breathing in an incredibly noisily way. And uh, I like the sound of this word, so I thought I would add it to my vocabulary. I decided to do a showing sentence, and a showing sentence is one action-packed sentence with at least three action verbs, and those action verbs have to be identified. And so you can see my sentence as it has been placed here. Um, and uh, my seventh grader, sixth and seventh graders simply have to identify the three verbs they're putting in the sentence, but my eighth graders would be required to tell me if they're transitive or intransitive because they've had that lesson. And so after discussing my sentence with a partner, I would say, uh, so what would your showing sentence with sturdorously in it be. And uh, that is my third word from my family and other animals. And my fourth word is actually a free word. I give my ch kids the chance to choose a free word every week if they hear a really good one. Um, three words from what we're reading and one word from it could can be a free. Usually they get four words from the, the book. The, the reading source, but uh, I found the word pilcro and decided I have to celebrate that because I didn't realize that the paragraph symbol, um, that the paragraph symbol is called a pilcro. And this one is, uh, this activity is called word art. It means you take the word and you create, you display it artistically and then explain your artisticness and uh, somehow explain how you understand the meaning of the word. A pilcro is a paragraph symbol. And so first of all, I reversed it and made the P that you see there in my word art. Um, indented, I decided um, the I would stand for the word indented. And so I moved it in five spaces, which is what an indentation is. LC, those letters from pilcro, I turned it into little chapters, which if you're reading an essay, you know that each indentation is the next little chapter of the essay. And then rows are very important when you are uh, scanning a document and you always know you come across a new idea or a new paragraph when uh, a new row is started with that indentation and so I decided this would be good word art um, and I of course challenged my partner to say what would you do to show that you understood and could remember pill crow. Um, word five I'm switching my source um, this uh, week after that I was listening to one of my new favorite podcasts which is Away With Words and I started hearing really good words on one episode and I said I've got to take some of these words and remember them. Um, they use the word fun Fungible, um, which I had to look up, um, but fungible means something that can replace something else, and you wouldn't really even re realize that something had been replaced. And it's often used in money terms. If funds get moved for, by the bank and new funds get go in their place, and you, the owner of those accounts, don't even realize they've moved, you can call that fungible fungible assets or fungible money or fungible um, fungible income. Um, but then. Uh, one of my vocabulary activities is you have to turn the word into a vocabulary haiku. And the rule of a vocabulary haiku, other than being five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables, is it has to somehow connect to the world of nature. And so I asked myself with the word fungible, what are things that can be interchanged or with each other and you might not notice? And I remembered winter's where my father lived in Colorado and every winter felt exactly the same there, which is what that picture is. And so I wrote the following 17 syllable haiku on fungible. Uh, I would ask my partner after sharing my haiku, hey, what would your haiku have been? Thus, we're having our vocabulary workshop. And then I would move on to partner six and my sixth partner would get to deal with the word solecism, which they also used on away with words. And I had to look it up, heard it, but forgotten what it means. It's just a fancy way of saying a grammatical mistake or a mistake that you make in writing or um, if you have really bad manners um, someone could actually say that you're committing a solecism or you're, you're, you've, you've made a solecism um, and one of our uh, vocabulary writing activities is create the fake horror movie poster and the vocab word has to either be in the title or in the movie's 
tagline. And so um, I put it in the title here. My t movie is titled Your Soul for a Solacism. And my tagline is Hades just learned about grammar. And the concept of my movie would be um, if you commit bad grammar errors, there's a special place in the underworld where Hades gets to poke you for making such bad errors. And so it's going to be a movie about that. And uh, my devil in the picture on this movie poster is uh, talking about split infinitives, which is probably the grammatical rule that you shouldn't break, that I break the most. And so after discussing this, I, I, first of all, I like that I did soul and solacism um, because there'll be a come time in my life where I say, oh, what is that word for a fancy grammatical mistake? And I'll have trouble coming up with solacism. But if I kind of remember the first chunk of it's soul, which is also a reminder in my movie title, then it's going to remind me what the word means. Uh, partner number seven, uh, they had a discussion of the word ruminate on the way with words podcast that I was listening to and ruminate um, you know if you ever watch a chow cow ugh, cow chew its cud um, it actually looks like it's very thoughtful while it's mouth it's moving it's ruminating and so ruminate doesn't mean you look like a cow chewing but it means that you look like you're thinking very deeply about something and so um, it's a, a, a good word but I discovered that ruminate was an EGOT and an EGOT is a special code word in my classroom which means if you look it up you'll discover that it has a noun form a verb form an adjective form and an adverb form that are all different from each other and the reason why we like that code word is you're learning four vocabulary words for the price of one definition you just have to know how to use them correctly in a sentence so if you you didn't want to use the verb you could figure out oh let's use ruminator as my noun and so you'll see the silly sentence I've written that's part of the activity and then we practice getting rid of those words like uh, let's change ruminator to thinker and end up with just one of those four words which one would sound best in the sentence uh, as it's as, as it's built and so um, I challenge my partner to come up with their own EGOT sentence that uses all four of those words ruminator through rumin ruminant ruminatively um, hard date to pronounce words all right and then finally word eight from my list um, they used the word prevaricate which is a verb I hadn't heard for a really long time and I said I got to remember that word um, but if you speak and you're not really answering the question and I immediately thought of politicians um, and um, this is a mr. stick comment by comic by the way usually they're just stick people but I've been experimenting with a new type of mr. stick comic where I just put a circle over a real picture's head and turn it into to a stick face um, and that's how I created um, my fake senator Drew Stickman from the state of Mrs. Sticky and um, a comic a St Mr. Stick comic needs to have a speech bubble and it needs to have a caption and in one of those two areas um, you need to have the word used correctly and then um, if you don't know the word there should be enough context clues that you could figure out what the word meant and so um, this is my comic for prevaricate so what I've just done here is I have gone through my every other week routine, but I've turned it into a video that could be shown, maybe in a student's absence, maybe as an option to the project so the students could just watch. These can be watched on iPads, they can be watched on laptops, they probably watched on phones. Um, there's a variety of ways that this uh, the, the screencast-o-matic can become available to other students. I, if you are ever interested in my vocabulary stuff, I post it all at my website. If you just Google Corbett Harrison Vocabulary Workshop, those four words, you'll end up at my page where you have this menu. Those are the first 10 vocabulary activities that I um, that my that I uh, assigned to my students and they helped me develop and then they developed on their own six more you saw a few of them like the phone app and the fake horror movie poster those are ones that my students created over time and they are now options in my class but we talk vocabulary and Screencast-O-Matic is a great program to show yourself talking about a topic so thanks for listening have a great day